Although it's difficult to land on Mars, the Perseverance rover survived the ordeal admirably last year, but the equipment that let it reach the surface of Mars safely met a less fortunate conclusion. The aftermath of the nerve-wracking landing is seen in new overhead photos from NASA's Ingenuity helicopter. Scientists and engineers in charge of the Perseverance rover and the Ingenuity chopper have described the past 14 months on Mars as exciting and exhausting. And that's just the beginning. Countless firsts have been accomplished and the mission continues till date. So what did the Mars Perseverance and Ingenuity mission discover? Also, what are the fresh images of Rover's crashed parachute and what do they mean? What else can we expect from the Perseverance project? A year ago, NASA's Perseverance rover was on the verge of crashing onto Mars after a 290 million mile seven month trip. The spacecraft carrying the rover penetrated the Martian atmosphere at 13,000 miles per hour. It had to perform a series of movements in just seven minutes, known as Seven Minutes of Terror by NASA engineers. The rover was shielded from the re entry heat by a heat shield which also significantly slowed it down. That was followed by the deployment of the enormous parachute, which slowed it down even more. After that, Perseverance's back shell and parachute separated, allowing the descent stage to take over and gently lower the rover to a landing using rocket engines and a sky crane. A safe landing was made for the rover, while the Ingenuity helicopter attached to its belly. In that time, the dynamic duo has expanded our understanding of Mars through a series of firsts, accumulating more than 50 gigabytes of data. Over the course of the previous year, the 23 cameras on Perseverance have taken over 100,000 images of Mars. These images are already assisting us in our search for ancient microbial life by providing hints as to how the landscape was formed by water. On April 19, 2021, the Ingenuity chopper took to the skies of Mars for the first ever powered flight on another planet. Off-world exploring became a whole lot easier thanks to Ingenuity, which features a 13 megapixel color camera and stereoscopic image capabilities and a black and white navigation camera pointed downward. Ingenuity is not only providing us with high resolution photographs, but it is also constructing a high-fidelity 3D representation of the Martian landscape with these cameras. However, a new viewpoint on the Perseverance rover's wreckage has emerged thanks to images taken by the Ingenuity helicopter this year. By using its color camera, Ingenuity captured the image series. This happened on its 26th flight on April the 19th. It provides a different perspective on the wreck than what we saw when the rover took a photo of the area recently. We can now see that the enormous parachute is covered with Martian dust, and the force of the impact has shattered the back shell. Although the parachute canopy looks to be undamaged, JPL says it will need further investigation to completely comprehend the helicopter images. The incredible images will be added to the chopper's already impressive body of work. Even though it was a risky technology demonstration, it logged the first powered and controlled flight on another planet. As Perseverance explores the delta region of Jezero Crater, a possible hotspot for ancient microbial life, it now serves as a scout and companion. Understanding what happened to the landing gear could aid future Mars missions, such as the Sample Return mission which will gather rock samples acquired by the rover and return them to Earth for examination. Scientists have fantasized for decades about bringing samples from Mars to Earth, where they might analyze them with cutting-edge technology in laboratories. Perseverance is the first step in realizing that dream of drilling rock cores and sealing them in tubes. On the other hand, the rover has no way of getting the rock samples off Mars and back to Earth. That will have to wait for NASA and the European Space Agency's Mars Sample Return Mission. Engineers put Perseverance's drill through its paces on a range of Earth rocks during the course of its development. However, the first rock that Perseverance tried to dig on Mars turned out to be unique 
compared to any other rock found on the planet Earth. The rock was reduced to a fine powder during the drilling and it slid out of the tube. There were complications with another drilling attempt following multiple successes. Inconveniently, pebbles spilled out of the tube in the rover's carousel where the drilling bits are stored, necessitating weeks of debugging. Perseverance has taken six samples of Martian rock and atmosphere so far and scientists back home are eagerly awaiting their return. Engineers have begun testing the robotics required for a sample return mission on Earth, where we can analyze the samples using technology that is too large or sophisticated for Mars. It's possible that NASA and the European Space Agency are working on a mission designed now, but it won't be before the end of the decade. The mission's original intention was to fly straight to the Delta from the landing spot. However, the rover landed in an area where the direct approach was obstructed by impassable sand dunes. Thereafter, scientists were fascinated by the geological formations to the south. According to geological evidence, the Jezero crater was once an ancient lake fed by a 120-mile-long river some 3.7 billion years ago when the crater was a dry, wind-eroded depression. The crater also features a triangular-shaped delta, which was formed when the river fed into the lake in the distant past. Because Jezero is a crater that was formerly a lake, it was expected that the sediments that settled to the bottom would create rocks at the bottom. However, there is evidence of high-energy flooding in the area, which transformed the sluggish, meandering waterway into fast-moving flash floods. These floods were strong enough to carry enormous boulders downstream before depositing them in the lake bed, maybe as a result of a significant change in the climate. Scientists hope to look for evidence of ancient aquatic life in the underlying layers of the landing area now that they know it was originally a lake. We now have the opportunity to look for fossils, says Tanya Bozak, an MIT professor of geobiology who was part of the project. It will take some time to get the rocks that we really hope to sample for signs of life. So it's a marathon with a lot of potentials. But Perseverance isn't the only one making waves. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter discovered that water flowed on Mars for a longer time than previously imagined. And they published their findings in the journal AGU Advances. Meanwhile, the Curiosity rover, which is still probing Mount Sharp's base, has determined that Mars has a sequence of large-scale oscillations between wetter and drier times before drying up completely some three billion years ago. One of the sites Perseverance is researching has been sub Ceta, meaning Navajo for among the sand. The geology of this area was initially assumed to be sedimentary, with strata of rocks generated by the consolidation of silt from either water or wind. Instead of sedimentary rocks, the crater floor was composed of coarser-grained igneous minerals, possibly laid down by ancient lava flow when the rover scraped the surface of these rocks with its abrasion tool. Many different salts were also found within the rocks. The idea that this could be a volcanic rock was really appealing to us from a sample return perspective, because igneous rocks are great for getting accurate age dates. Jezero was one of the few ancient crater lake sites on Mars that seemed to have incredible sedimentary deposits and volcanic deposits that could help us construct the geologic timescale of Mars, said Catherine Stack Morgan, Mars 2020 Deputy Project Scientist and JPL Research Scientist. The occurrence of olivine crystals consumed by the mineral pyroxene at Seta shows that water flowed through the crevices in the igneous rocks after they were put down, precipitating these minerals from the water. In other words, the igneous rock and water interacted to form the minerals. The crater floor rocks were not intended to be the mission's primary astrobiology focus, but Mars usually shocks us when we get up close to discover that even these rocks had maintained contact with water and heads could have been hospitable for ancient Martian microbes is exciting. The Jezero crater rocks have been scanned by Sherlock, a piece of equipment that uses Raman spectroscopy 
and luminance to identify carbon-containing organic compounds. Carbon-containing molecules have been discovered in both the interiors of abraded rocks and the dust on non-abraded rocks. Perseverance must return to the landing place, then circumnavigate the sand dunes to the north in order to reach the delta. It could reach the delta by the end of May or the beginning of June. Perseverance's most exciting find would be images of what appear to be minuscule fossils once they arrived at the delta. This is not necessarily proof that life occurred on Mars in the past, as organics can be created by non-biological means as well. That being said, it is highly doubtful that Perseverance will come across any evidence of a live organism's residue. That is why it is critical to bring the rocks to Earth for deeper inspection, as they will serve as a source of scientific inquiry and discovery for decades to come. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more high quality content.